But to go back to Mandy's question, so apart from the usual dodging and burning, would it be ethical to completely remove the house that sits to the right of my image in the woodland? So if we look up here, what we can see is there's a house up in the right hand corner. And she goes on to say, uh, or sh should I just leave it? I would like to print this image for myself, so I may just remove it. But should ever a time come that somebody wants a print, where would I stand? Would I leave it in? This is just something I wondered while editing this image. Now, she sent me the original. I was going to sort of maybe play around with a few edits, but to be honest, the editing of this isn't, you know, in terms of the look that you're going for. I don't really think, you know, you've decided that you want this sort of strong black and white thing. I think it's a powerful look. Five minutes of me editing on the screen isn't going to necessarily give you anything else. I mean, what I might say is bring a little bit more detail out of the shadows because what there is over here, ignore that house for the moment, but there is texture in these, these trees, which I quite, I must admit, I quite like. And I think a little bit more dodging and burning, so a little bit of dodge on the tops of the trees here will help lighten the tips and give you a little bit more texture in that area rather than it just being, otherwise it's just going to be sort of too dominant black. And the other thing to be aware of is when you come to print it, quite often these things print out just a little bit darker than they appear on screen as well. So that would actually become a large sort of lump of black, which wouldn't particularly be doing the favors for your photo, um, would be undermining what you've already achieved here. But that aside, other than that, that's the only thing that I would say about the editing in terms of um, contrast. The interesting bit, though, is this question. What about this house? This house, she doesn't like the look of, should it be there? What's, is there, and she, as, as Mandy says, you know, well, if she's just going to print it for herself, it doesn't matter. She'll happily remove it. But what if somebody else wants this picture? Is there something ethically wrong in removing the bit that you feel is upsetting the balance of the photo that you've created? Now, you can argue it many different ways. And in the end, part of it will, Mandy, will come down to how you feel about it. But if you're asking me, I would say, move it, remove it. I, I don't see a problem with that. And I'm going to tell you, but, uh, but it's not just enough for me to say that, you know, yes or no. <clears throat> you need to know why. The fact is that what you've done here is you've set this up as an artistic photo. You're not doing it as a documentary photo. OK, and there's a big difference. Well, there is in my mind, at least. Now, there, the, <laughs> in a way, I suppose the whole philosophy of, of photography is, a, is, is being debated on, on, uh, here. There are the, the biggest piece of nonsense ever said about photography is the camera never lies. It's total nonsense. The camera never tells the truth. The camera is incapable of telling the truth, the truth as we perceive it. Um, the camera, can the camera, the camera's not capturing three dimensions, it's two. It's not capturing four dimensions, it's not capturing time, it's not capturing smell, it's not capturing feel, it's not capturing sound. When we're standing on the edge of that beach, we're smelling the salt in the air, we're feeling the, 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 the breeze against our, our, our face, we're hearing the dog barking or the, or the cows mooing or the cars going past in the distance, we're hearing the sea lapping, we're feeling the sand squidging under our feet, especially the wet sand. Um, and there's this whole entire experience which we're never going to be able to fully capture in the two dimensions. But, of course, obviously what we're trying to do is evoke some of these memories and feelings in the viewer. Now, what you've already done with this, Mandy, is you've turned it to black and white. This photo, let me zoom back out so we know exactly what we're talking about here. Just... This photo is not the same as this photo. This photo I recognise as 
a reflection of the kind of day where I've been out to the beach and it's been dull and overcast and you sort of got out of the car, walked around for a bit and then it started spitting with rain again and you've gone back and sat in the car to eat your sandwiches. I recognise that kind of thing. But, you know, do I want to be reminded of that? Not particularly. This is a much more dramatic photo. You've made it dramatic by the way you've edited it. You've moved away from recording it as it is into a work of art. You are being an artist with it. You are trying to convey some kind of message or mood and you have made alterations within it to enhance that message or mood that you're doing. Now, the very quick, easy way, if you really feel uncomfortable about it, is to just crop in that side a little bit more. You know, if you crop in from the right, you know, an inch, you, you cropped out the thing and it's still real. But if that throws your balance out, if you've decided you want these lines and these proportions exactly the way they are for that reason, then why not remove it? Now, I suppose I, part of this, where I come from, the, my background is my father is an artist. Traditional landscapes in oils and watercolours. Uh, if you want to look up another Ayers, my wife is an artist. Maggie Ayers, go up, look up her work. Her work is abstract. My father is much more traditional representational, Donald Ayers. So look up Donald Ayers, you can find pictures that he does. He's a landscape artist and I grew up with my dad painting landscapes. And he painted, he didn't make up the landscapes as such, he painted views that people knew, he painted mountains that people were aware of, he painted um, beaches or bays or um, woodlands or whatever that people have walked past and seen views of. But he always used to say he never painted what was actually there. He said he painted your memory of it. So he wouldn't put the telegraph pylons in. He wouldn't put the cow pats in. He wouldn't have the midges and the mosquitoes in. He would make sure it was on a nice, warm, sunny day rather than an overcast, dull, wet, miserable day. He would paint the best version of it so that when you looked at it, it evoked all your favourite memories of the place. And he was very, it would very often, you know, you say, oh, I kind of remember that path there. And you say, no, that path isn't actually there. That path is over there. Or we put in a gatepost somewhere. But he would draw, he, was, he would use compositional techniques of leading lines, of using, a, you know, a path to draw you into the image. But he would remove the path. He would change the angle of the path to get your eye to travel to the point that you wanted. And he never saw any problem in that because what he was doing was he was creating something that you wanted to have on your wall. Because when you looked at it on your wall, you got that nice, warm, bubbly feeling of kind of what it remembered to be like when you were there. And that is... An artist has been doing that since day one. I mean, you, you look at the, 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 the rock art of, um, you know, Neolithic cave or no, is it Neolithic? Um, which one's the old one? I can't remember. Paleolithic, Neolithic. Anyway, whichever. The, the old stone cave paintings, you know, where you get these credible paintings of bison and antelope and, and what have you. Um, they're not exact, but they're not poor. They're not kids' drawings. They're full of incredible power. They're representing ideas of what's there. And the whole history of painting and art is about conveying story and mood and feeling. And how you get that across is what we are all chasing. How many times have you heard me say over the last 27 weeks, you know, where's the story in this photo? And the, when, once you understand the story you're telling, then how you edit it, where you crop it, what you do with the colours, what you remove, what you add in, are all about enhancing that story so that the viewer picks up on what you are trying to communicate. And what you are trying to communicate in this picture, Mandy, that feeling of the drama of the, you know, where you, you can feel it's not just a dull day, it's now a dramatic day. You know, the storm is brewing or the storm is passing and we're standing there and we're feeling the anticipation of the weather 
rather than the disappointment <laughs> of the weather, which is what mostly what we tend to have on days like, you know, in your original photo, that's that's the photo that conveys the disappointment of the weather. We thought we'd go down to the beach and we took the buckets and spades and that's what we were, you know, so we got back in the car and ate our sandwiches and had our flask of soup and sort of then went home again. Um, but that, this, this is the anticipation of something exciting. Now, if you feel at that point that that house gets in the way, then get rid of it. You know, crop it in if you really feel like you, you don't want to be lying as such. But it's not lying, it's storytelling. Um, you're already lying, if you want, if you want to put it that way, because it didn't look this dramatic. It looked disappointingly dull. And now this isn't disappointingly dull. This is anticipatingly dramatic. So where do you draw the line on this, you know? You draw the line in what works, what works and what doesn't work. Now, there is a difference if you remove that house and then you were trying to sort of, you know, do some legal thing and say, oh, that house was built illegally on that land. Look, here's a photo where it doesn't exist. And then suddenly somebody's put it there. And, you know, fine, you know, you get there. but you're not doing that. You're creating something which is going to be printed out and put on a wall. Or it's going to be used as a a desktop background on your screen or is going to be printed as a t-shirt or, or made into a jigsaw puzzle or a mouse mat or whatever else you want to do with it um, but you you've got an image that you're creating a mood to convey that mood and if the house gets in the way of that get rid of it if the stone got in the way of it get rid of it I mean you saw earlier Paul had removed the person walking in the background and I don't see any problem with that um, if you wanted to put something in, if you wanted to put a dog running across, and then I would talk about the same things that I talked about with Vigi earlier, which is we'll make sure it's lit from the same direction, that it's the appropriate size, that you've got the right angle on it and everything else for it to be. But again, I don't really see any problem with that either, because what you're doing is you're being an artist. You're not just being a documentarist. And if you go back to actually, I just suddenly remembered, Mandy, the very first photo that you submitted to these podcasts of the woman walking into the into the river with her dress flowing. What did I do with it except take the bridge that was in the background and lower it? Because I felt that there was too much gap between the, you know, the, the top of the woman and where the arch of the bridge was. And I said, so I cut that out and pulled it down to make what felt like... Uh, well, to me at least, <laughs> um, a picture that sort of felt more contained within it. Now, that was more of a fantasy style picture. So maybe you didn't feel that it you, uh, you you didn't maybe didn't worry about it quite so much. But but this is a fantasy style picture, too. So really, I mean, now there will still be diehards out there who might be listening to me who are thinking that I'm talking nonsense and that you mustn't ever do anything like that, in which case leave a comment. <laughs> Come back to me next week. Send me the email. Try and convince me otherwise. Um, but for here right now, I would say remove the house if you don't want it. The only other suggestion I would have is really literally bring the texture out of those trees on the right. Because I think they will echo the, that little... When I look here, the texture is echoing the shape of your clouds up here. And I think that to have a lighter... Just getting those highlights echoing light on the dark echoing the dark on the light over there will just lift that a little bit but that aside you know yeah and just copy and paste or use the clone to, uh, the the patch tool or something like that you know happily remove it so hope that's not too controversial hope you found that useful mandy if you found this useful let your friends know and hit subscribe